Tim Warnsby is a hockey writer and CBC Sports.ca uh, contributor. He joins me now with more on today's announcements. So, Tim, what was your reaction to this? Well, it's about time uh, that this tournament's come back. Uh, you know, this started as a Canada Cup back in 1976, and it was about every three or four years. Uh, the last, then we had, then it changed to the World Cup of Hockey in 1996 when the U.S. upset Canada. And then we didn't have one until 2004, and now we're going to go 12 years. And I think the reason why uh, there was no tournament for that long a period is because there was a, a, a kind of that heated battle, a uh, labor battle between the NHLPA and the NHL. They had more things they had to agree on. Of course, they lost a season. Uh, there was quite a bit of disagreement. They didn't get along. Now they're back. They've got the 10-year agreement. There's a lot of labor harmony. So they worked this out as part of that. And uh, it's good to see this tournament come back because w if there's one thing we get excited about these days, it's not just the Stanley Cup final, the Olympics, but it's when the best players play against the best players. And that's what this tournament's all about. Yes, it's at an awkward time at the beginning of a season, but uh, still, uh, once they get going, you see some of that best hockey emerge. Yeah, it certainly is. It feels like that battle for supremacy, much like the Olympics in yeah. a way as well. So you mentioned, why are they bringing it back now? Is it that relations are better? Well, I think there's a number of reasons. Yeah, one big thing is the relations. Uh, this is another way to uh, grow the game, uh, have the best players play, do something different. You know, we're in the dog days of the regular season right now. I don't know if there's much attention to it. Oh, yes, there's the all, it's all-star weekend and stuff like that. But this is just a nice thing to have. You look at soccer, uh, the world's most popular sport. They have so many outside league events, like the World Cup, like the European Cup these other uh, champions leagues. And hockey doesn't really have that. They just have the Olympics. And so they need this uh, World Cup to sort of uh, have between the Olympic years. And it'd be nice if they can continue this now and have it uh, the two years in between the two Olympics that uh, yeah. the NHL participates in. So what do you think the reaction is going to be from the fans and from the players? About the new format? Um, I think there's going to be a mixed reaction. Uh, you know, Connor McDavid, we just watched him uh, play for Canada, the World Junior, in, in 2016, he'll be a good NHLer, but he won't be able to play for Canada. He'll be yeah, playing on that. Yeah, break down that new format for us, yeah, because well, this is a little weird. So it used to be an eight-team event. The, so the two teams that have gone by the wayside are Slovakia and Germany. Um, that hurts those countries because, you know, when they play in a tournament like this, a lot of kids from those countries watch the game, maybe want to get interested in hockey. So it might hurt growth in some of the lesser European countries, um, but uh, the argument can be made that, hey, there's a lot of really good players that are left out of this tournament, either Canadians, there's no room on the Canadian team, Americans, same sort of thing. Now they'll have a spot on an under-23 team, and uh, some of these great Europeans like Anze Kopitar from the LA Kings, who's won two Stanley Cups, comes from Slovenia. Well, he's basically the only good national team player they have, so now he has a place to play too. So we're talking Canada, USA, Russia, Sweden, Finland, Czech Republic, then that Young Stars team yeah. that you were just talking about, and then the All-Star European team. Right. When it comes to the Young Stars team, it seems like there's a bit of controversy there, because while they are getting those young players in, yeah. I think some of them, it appears, want to play for Team Canada and not this Young Stars team. It, it, it'll be tough. Could you imagine, uh, I guess Sidney Crosby, what would it be, seven years ago if this tournament was, he'd have to play for that, exactly. he couldn't play for Canada. Um, and then there's also the theory that in soccer, for instance, they don't send their best players to the Olympics. They send a, what's called an under-23 team. And uh, is this maybe a prelude to something uh, that uh, the NHL will try with the Olympic Games? Yeah, because the Olympics, you know, they, especially for Canada and hockey, these memorable moments that yeah. so many Canadians have emblazoned. It's strange to think, although those moments weren't all always there, and NHL kept their players out of the Olympics for a long time. Do you think that this is a signal that we're going back to no more NHL players in the Olympics? It's, it's really tough to get a read on it. We're almost a year away from, from what we watched in Sochi. We're 11 months away. Uh, they still got three years to figure it out. It's, it's, the, it's going all the way over there to South Korea. They did it for Nagano in Japan in 1998. Do they want to go all the way back again? Uh, it'll be very interesting. Now, I noticed a, a few of the players uh, at the All-Star Weekend spoke up and said, we'd like to go back and play in the Olympics again. So I think if the players keep uh, the pressure on the owners and, the, and their league to, to, to ha make it happen again, then they'll be there in 2018. Otherwise, it creates those tense relations that you were talking about between yeah, the players and the NHL. Much. It doesn't take much. Exactly. Are you excited about this? Yeah, very much so. I, I think it's good. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, we all know what happens down at the Air Canada Centre. Not much good hockey's played there, so maybe there'll be a championship that tr Canada and Toronto can celebrate. 